Let's get this party started. Yay! Party tonight. Up, down. Plus up. I can't hear anybody. Speakers. Where? Oh, screen is on. Oh. Mm, I, I can't hear them. Well, we're not I, we can hear you, Jen. Oh, okay. Yep. You were fine. You changed something. Now we can't see you. You were fine. Oh, okay. Here. There. Oh, okay, there here you now. go. Now I can see you. Sorry, I'm, I'm not used to this laptop. It's it's not my computer. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Ready, Dante? Yep, I'm about to start here in a second. Okay. Yeah. It says we're live. I know, I'm waiting for it to start. Stop that. Hold on. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Soup Man Productions. Welcome to Autastic Artist 4. Um, this week we have a great guest. Uh, they do a lot of work. They're a writer, a pair, educator. But we're also starting to get the swing of things. So we're on time. We're actually getting everything going. And we've got a really... Excited guess. I'm, I'm excited to hear what they say. I know our, our panel's excited to hear them. Of course, we've got everybody here. Um, I'm your host, uh, the loudmouth, the talker, Dante Suitman Barnett. Oh, Yay. I didn't get no sound. <laughs> there we go. JJ woke up. Fuck, it's 8.15. You should be awake by now. I hope give, so. <laughs> give it up for our other co-host, uh, Jane Jira. She draws. Buy my stickers. Yeah. Uh, also, give it up for other cocos. Oh, I'm tired. I'm being grumpy today. We got Sunshine and the damn potato chip enthusiast again. Give oh, it up yeah. for Sunshine. Yay. And today, our guest, um, I'll let her tell her tell us a little bit about who she is first. I'll try not to steal her thunder. Uh, give it up for our guest today, Jen Etchelson. It's Elchison. Oh, <laughs> anyway, it um, actually, it's interesting. Um, it's actually harder to pronounce when it's in Ukrainian. We had it changed uh, to sound more Angloized, and still people don't get it. So it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. But um, eventually, I will be changing my last name because um, I'm. I announced that last Christmas. Uh, my last name will be Smits, which rhymes with shits. And <laughs> as you I'm guys so know, sorry. I work with kids. And yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's funny because they like to give us nicknames. So I'm kind of prepared. But please yeah, tell anyway. me they haven't actually given you a nickname yet with the new last name. Not yet, but I'm prepared. Okay. okay. Really prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So if anyone doesn't know, Jen and I actually know each other. I mean, sort of. Mm -hmm. We've actually talked. We've socialized on the internet. We basically are internet friends. And we're autistic tribe members together. And Jen helped write this book um, called Spectrum Women and Walking to the Beat of Your Own Drum. And they collaborated with um, many, yes, there yes. it is, many other writers on this project, and it was awesome. Uh, so I did have a question because I kind of came into, I call what I, I tacked on to the group of friends that, you know, because you guys all knew each other. So my question is, how did you meet Barb? Like, how did you get involved in that? It's actually really interesting. Um, I met uh, through someone who has a very unethical reputation, so I'm not going to name them. So it was kind of, 
you know, weird and awkward how we met. Um, Barb had a magazine at the time. It wasn't online yet. It was actually a glossy magazine called Autism Asperger's Network. And oh, yeah. Based around an organization she ran down in Australia at the time. And um, so that eventually uh, became an online magazine. But then she decided to focus more on women. This was back in... 2016 and um so she came up with uh spectrum women and a bunch of us writers in the community um just you know we all knew her we all got together and that's how we met some of us knew each other already and some of us didn't but uh in short that's how that happened wow i mean it's it's an amazing book i don't know if anybody else if jane Gere or dante if you've read it but it really highlights and celebrates um, you know, autistic women, and also I think non-binary and gender fluid, because it really encompasses, I think, a lot more of that other side that I think everyone tends to miss. Would you? Yeah, guys? we had um, people of all genders uh, say positive things about the book, and um, yeah, it's just basically a really good book for people who are later diagnosed in life. I, um, I was diagnosed actually a little bit earlier in my teens and back when barely anybody got diagnosed. So I'm kind of a wild card. I've been, you know, this community for a long time, but, um, not as long as I wish. I wish I was, um, more active in the late nineties, like some other, activists and advocates, especially in the Pacific Northwest. So um, I kind of missed the boat on that. I didn't really come to terms with my diagnosis until I was attending college and decided to do a practicum um, working with some kids. It was in a, it was actually at an ABA center and that's where I got firsthand experience about how, you know, awful that is. Mm -hmm. So, but in a way it did kind of open the door, like, unfortunately, you know, in a really awful way, but it did pave the way for my career in the schools. So, sorry, I, I ramble a lot. I've been, no, you know what yeah. I I've been waiting. I think this is going to turn into one of those, you know, those things because you and I have never talked in person. So it's going to be a me and you show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because we've known each other for a number of years. Like, I think I, yeah. I met you through Becca and I think yeah. that was around the time when um, we were just producing the online magazine. So we've known each other for probably more than five years, I'm guessing. Yes, I think so. Because it was, yeah, I remember when back when I think it was AANE or whatever, you know, that, that magazine, like you said, was starting to get out there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's why it's been, a, that's why when you agreed to the show, I thought, boy, this is exciting. And I've watched your journey from a few, several years ago from this book until now. And it's been great because I've seen you grow professionally and actually personally as well. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Stay here with our sound effects. <laughs> I kind of miss that, you know, because um, I do have a background in comedy. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but um, back when I was in college, um, some, I say, um, way too much, fuck. Uh, <laughs> and I also swear a lot too, so be forewarned. Um, you and I both. Have you seen right. the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't fucking talk about me. I feel attacked. Have you seen a fucking shoot? So I did. I did the aut uh, autistic uh, comedy showcase this morning and we were, it was 5 a.m. The guy was asking the chat room. He was like, can we use profanity? And I was like, motherfucker, suit man's on the show. If suit man's on the show, you can fucking swear. <laughs> like that's, that's a byproduct of me being on the fucking show. You're going to get a fuck cup and fuck off bombs. You know what I mean? And motherfucker, a bitch. You know what I mean? That's how it works. You're good. Awesome, because I was letting off a lot of f bombs and freaking out, just trying to get on here on time. Because oh, um, don't worry, I was yeah. too. I was too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when I was in college, funny enough, and this is something a lot of people don't um, really know about me, especially since I work in the public sector now. But I mean, I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it. Um, I used to be involved with a burlesque troupe, and Ooh. I was the announcer. That is awesome. Yeah, I think that's great. So I mean, because well, that's such a unique thing, you know, that makes you you. Yeah, I was. I mean, I can't believe I did it back then. I'm a completely uh, different person now when it comes to my artistic pursuits. They're more 
you know, around the written word, but, but this was fun because um, a lot of the times it was improvised, like a lot of things. We were just a group of friends who were um, really inspired by people um, from Vancouver and Seattle and, you know, just all kinds and places all across the United States and even over in the UK and even across Canada. Um, we were really inspired by these uh, underground neo burlesque troops. So we thought, what the hey, you know, we'd start up our own. And I just really wanted to be the announcer because when I was younger, I wanted to do radio, but I never got into that. I got into education, um, well, preschool type stuff. That's what I was also doing as a side job in college. But anyway, this was fun. Um, I got to go on stage, usually a little tipsy and tell booby jokes and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and also... Like it was, it was crude, but it wasn't offensive because uh, it had a real feminist slant where uh, we celebrated all bodies, all genders, um, just people from, you know, all different countries because burlesque is all over. You'd be surprised where you'd find it. So, and right. the history in it and everything. Well, no, let me I'm interject curious. there because yeah. um, I'm like, I think we crew. have some questions. No, no, no. I got some questions, but I got to <laughs> I did. Well, I, had her. I got to add here. Hold on. Time out. You got my motherfucking attention. Hey, all right. No, but it was funny because um, I think Jane was there. Yeah, we did the comedy show for Cupid's Cupid's Rejects and we did a burlesque show before the comedy show. And that's an art. Like, I can't do some of that shit, let alone put on a corset or whatever the fuck it is. Like, I'm not doing all that. Like, I was like, and then it gets a little steamy in there. I wasn't ready. I Sorry, don't know go how ahead. you get Let's... into the burlesque scene. Yeah. Yeah, this, well, it was interesting. I, um, I met my best friend, Dawn, through a girl in my sociology class. And Dawn and I are like peas and carrots. Uh, we just we get along so well. And she's an artist and just a really creative, fun person to be around. She's also autistic. I diagnosed her first before the professionals. Um, <laughs> we and can we always just, tell, right? <laughs> we were just really, uh, we, we realized we both really liked comedy and just joking around. We'd crack each other up. So, you know, we kind of took um, our funny bones to the stage. And uh, a lot of it was comedy when I look back on it. Because I would announce these girls and some nights I would just blurt out all kinds of crazy stuff and I just couldn't believe the response in the audience because um like a lot of autistic people I do really well on stage and stuff and with public speaking but one thing that my friend Dawn and I always joke about after the show is that once the show was over we would pack up our shit and just get out of there and the club owner would be like why don't you guys stay and dance and we're like well we had a job to do we had a job to entertain the audience and we're tired we want to go home and <laughs> it was you know, just funny. I, I know i have to laugh because as much as i enjoy this here and it's fun and it's like you said it's light it's entertaining as soon as i get off here i'm gonna be like all right i'm gonna go sit in front of my tv and read and veg for the next like four hours <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go watch nurses who kill so all yeah good. <laughs> exactly so you need crazy. that release it was crazy yeah totally because i did an interview with arc one day and did a whole day of this i did our first podcast and then i did an interview with arc and did dwd and i was just exhausted i was just like fuck like to give the raw emotion of talking about because i'm a bigger black guy than black black we don't it's hard to find black guests because we don't accept it it's like you're just you're, your boy is slow get it together you know what i mean and it was just it's exhausting telling people yeah, I'm 6'3 and 280, but I don't mean to scare you. I'm just socially awkward. You know what I mean? Like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Just go and do that. It, it kills me sometimes. Totally. And I really appreciate you sharing that. One thing I love about this show is the diversity and how it centers people of color. So as a white person, I feel very honored to be on the show just as an aside. You know, oh. I, I really feel honored because um like I was saying in my pre-interview, one thing I'm not really doing right now is too much uh, public writing because I feel like it's time to listen to other people. You know, actually, Jen, you are the one who inspired me to do this show. Really? Yeah. I had, I had actually posted, <laughs> Jen was the one who responded. So I had actually posted in the neurodiversity newsstand about writing and I had gotten several responses and, you know, the generic stuff, but there was two responses, one from Steve Silberman, 
from, you know, and he said, Hey, message me separately. So I talked to him separately, but then Jen responded and said, you know, Hey, I, I'm done talking. I want to hear you tell your story. And so, she, you know, they went into all about, you know, the writing process. And that's when I came up with the idea for a, sh you know, a show like this and that mm -hmm. then brought it to Dante. And he was like, yep come on in let's do it i'll you know i want to put this together she sent me a message it was like hey uh can we do a zoom meeting and talk about doing a show and i was like so what do you want to talk about she's like i want to do something with the community and i was like i got to an answer we're going to do the show with autistic people and talk about how they're creative she's like well how will we do that i said don't worry i got a ton of comics we're going to interview them i'll make it funny we'll keep it going i'm going to cuss a lot and be crazy don't worry we'll be fine she's like you sure it's like yeah half hour later i called jane Jane goes, hey, I'm autistic. And then I was like, oh, I'm a jerk. I didn't even know you were autistic. And then, <laughs> then Audra goes, well, aren't you autistic? I said, hey, whoa, what did you call me? And, she, and then I thought about it. I was like, yeah, I grew up in the portable classes. And I was just always smart. So I wasn't held back. Yeah, OK, never mind. You got a point. And so it's <laughs> it's one of those where, like, you talk about representation. I uh, like it, uh, it, in performing. There's a black woman who's talking about it. And she's she's going to be our cast and i think she's it's what is it ndl some some sort of learning disorder that's oh nonverbal learning disorder there we go nonverbal mm -hmm. learning disorder and her talking about that really had the dynamic of the difference between and then i was it was the combination of those three people emma talking about how uk doesn't really um diagnose it they call it a social disorder instead which 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 changes the benefits and money you can like i try to explain this to me there's a whole economical impact by having ADHD versus having autism as far as what services you'll get money you can get you don't like so they're, they're <laughs> right so it's 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 weird to not so much see but to to be able to identify these things and, and see where there's an inter intersexual need for different my mi minority groups within a minority to have a voice well now see I'm curious Jen because you you do not live, I, I will just, I'm not going to put where you live, you know, if they want to know, they can, you know, <laughs> that's a personal thing, but yeah, I will just say you, you're not in the States. No, I'm Canadian. I'm yeah, actually a neighbor. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a long plane ride, but basically I, I just describe myself as being up the hill and a little ways over from the Pacific Northwest. So, yeah, you know, I, I was so excited when I found out, you know, you're from Seattle and you know, this is based in Seattle. Seattle's an awesome city. I haven't visited in years and I'm just getting to know more and more people from that area, whether it's through um, the autistic community or uh, through the music I enjoy. So it's really cool. And I got quite a diverse group of friends down there. I'd love to visit again. Yes. And so that's that. Well, I was going to visit until obviously COVID happened, right. but yeah, yeah. now travel's going to be next on my, <laughs> yeah, travel's going to be next on my list. Um, I'm curious, you know, cause there's like Dante was saying, there's that, you know, gap between services and is it the same in uh, Canada at your schools? Oh, absolutely. Where the lack oh, okay. Oh, that's and too bad. What's that? I said, that's too bad that there's that lack of services still. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started. Canada is really bad for um, the services they do provide because um, it's really no different than than it is in the U.S. You know, a lot of insurance companies will only pay for ABA and, you know, and that's really problematic. Yeah, total boo. Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me started on the um, systemic racism and how so many of our indigenous students miss out like people will yes. automatically think FASD you know and mm -hmm. hold on stop stop because I need you to start a year throwing out acronyms everybody doesn't know them so you need to tell us what these are fetal alcohol oh. syndrome okay yeah and there's you know there's a lot of stereotypes too and um yeah, that's a population where a lot of the kids aren't getting diagnosed. I mean, some are, but it's so slow. Like it's, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Even uh, middle-class white boys aren't even getting diagnosed. They'll, they'll make other uh, excuses. They'll say they're uh, oppositional defiant or ADHD before they'll uh, say they're autistic and things like that. And I've been in education for a very long time and, you know, I, I've seen it and I've seen 
don't even get me started on the treatment. You know, I want, I want to keep things fairly light tonight, but also, you know, shed light on things that are important. And oh, yeah. Like, French, but fuck that. We're here for the dark. We start dark and then we'll get lighter by the end. <laughs> yeah, we'll get so we light, gotta, you know. No, uh, we maybe. do. This is the pattern of the show. We're going to peel the onion. We got to get through all the shit to get to the good stuff. So let it out. Let it out. I'm an ADH year, so, I mean, I get it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just a real shame some of the things I've gone through. Um, you know, because I oppose ABA, I have had students non-assigned from me. Yep. I, I won't go into too much detail, but that hurts a lot. I just um, saw about that the so other you, day. That, what do that you mean happened. you oppose ADA? You oppose the, the I don't American believe... Disabilities Act or what? I don't oh, a a B -A. Oh, a B A. I'm, I'm deaf in one ear. I have multiple disabilities, so I can't hear. No anything. worries. Hey. Check in with me if you're not sure, but uh, applied behavioral uh, analysis, I mean, it's rampant uh, across North America and it's all insurance companies will pay for and things like that. And, you know, when I work with kids, I've been doing this for so long and I've been researching stuff and I'm really trying to do better and be better. And um, one thing I will not do is subject kids to that kind of treatment, but unfortunately, a lot of people aren't very well educated on it. They think because it does work, it's a good thing. And it's like, no, <laughs> the reason why it's not a good thing is because it does work. And it puts kids in such vulnerable positions. Like um, one day, maybe I will share more, but you know, I just, there's a lot of things I can't so share for are my you own a, protection. A special education paraeducator? Yes. Okay. So I was a sped as well as what we called them, um, sped, sped, ed, sped, sped pairs. And that's where I found the, the racism in, in the diagnosis because black kids are being, getting put in BD classes, which we call behavioral disorders. Mm -hmm. Right. And the kid, the, the teacher that's making the this decision and giving this diagnosis and it's, it is racist because none of them are usually black people understanding a black family or someone who's cultured in a black family or how to talk to it because the parents aren't understanding what you're talking about. It's, it's taboo to be special. You're just slow. He's, you know what I mean? Like in our culture, it's just, you're, you're not, you don't have diabetes. You'll be all right. Eat your greens. You know what I mean? Shut up. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. to see, even like the post, when we talk about women, like it, for all the people who are said that, you know, you talk too much in class or you were disruptive or all these different things. Now we're understanding that you had, so, you know what I mean? Social issues or you blurred out answers. Well, yeah, I blurred out answers because Timmy's taking too fucking long and you asked a question. I want to go on to the next question. Sorry, I'm five years old and already fucking feel that way. Audra went to school with me, so she knows what the fuck I'm talking about. I used to get in trouble because I'd come in and I'd have all the answers. And they'd be like, you can't answer a question today. Why fucking not? Let's get the fuck out of here. Like. Sorry. You have to raise your hand if you want to answer. I don't want to raise my fucking hand. I don't raise my yeah. hand now. Look, I'm raising it. I'm talking then. Fine. I don't have to wait for you to fucking call on me either. Fucking Timmy's stuttering. I don't want to hear him read anymore. Fuck you. I think the last class we had together, Dante, was was it was it English class in 11th grade? Oh, God. Yeah. And I think that was the last one we had. And that's where he, the last one we had that I remember anyways is him getting up and yelling about something and just storming out of class. <laughs> they try to kick me out of school because I got paid to write somebody else's paper. And then she tried <laughs> to give me an A minus on mine because I did somebody up. Bitch, if I can do two assignments, how am I getting an A minus? <laughs> Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> but this is this is what I'm talking about. So this is where the racism comes in because you've got a kid who's big like me and I've been this height since I was 11. And I can remember getting frustrated like this and shouting or, or being frustrated. And now you're calling security on me. And now you've got a nine-year-old getting arrested for a mental health disorder. Black kids are getting arrested at fucking schools in fucking fifth grade. Are you fucking kidding? What the? F Dante needs to mute. I digress. <laughs> I digress. But I, I, I see it. And it's one of those where I was a paraeducator. And so I could see it. Um, and it was like, like you, I didn't, I, I self-diagnosed because of these guys and not really because of these guys, but they reminded me. And then the more I do, the more I find I'm not weird to you guys. You guys are like, yeah, you're our hero. You talk a little bit and you're a little bit normal. All right. Yeah. We like you. Come on, come on. Right. But I don't feel weird. And so when I go off on these tangents or I have these thoughts or I have these emotions, all you guys are looking at me going, I understand, big black guy. Calm down. It's all right. We'll be okay. 
warm kitty, soft kitty, pocket <laughs> full of fur. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so yeah. it's, it's, as you talking as an educator, I can talk more openly because I'm not in it anymore. I've seen the line where minority kids, um, let's get to the ESL kids who are now autistic as well as trying to learn a second language, right? Let's yeah, go. I've worked with them too. <laughs> right. And, and, and you know, um, they got, I'm really proud to say that um, I recently had a couple of students who, um, you know, have situational mutism. Uh, one of them had situational mutism, neurodivergent fellow, and then the other kid, well, his uh, language was Korean. And, you know, he, he was always putting himself down for his English. And I'm like, nobody, you're, you're doing awesome. You're doing great. Like, you know, you actually understand it better than a lot of the kids at the school. So don't beat yourself up. Like, you know, it's hard to learn another language. And, and, you know, and, and I, I know that you're shy and you struggle with socializing. Well, so do I. So let's just make the best of this. And, you know, and both these kids had real talents and they ended up getting very high marks because, you know, I, the teacher and I did everything we could to just try and, you know, accommodate them. I mean, yes, there's a lot I could have done better, but, you know, they, they did really well. And it's really hard to get a good mark in that particular class. So, yay. That's I think this is why we get along too, is because we've all, the three of us, Dante, me, and you, Jen, we've all had ed experiences in professionally with education and the mental health field. Yeah. And that's what I just, I love my job. I mean, you know, when I talk about things, th these were at past jobs. I'm at a very good place right now. I'm at a school that's, uh, you know, it's very diverse. It also has uh, the most uh, queer staff. And yes. And I find that it's kind of funny. Um, I don't know if you guys experience this, but sometimes when I go to a place, I'm thinking, you know, this place needs more autistics. And then they start coming. It's awesome. Even if they're there for a little while and stuff, like, it's great. Like this school has, you know, other staff that are neurodivergent and, you know, it's, it's such a great place because the other day a friend um, posted a meme about, you know, not wanting to say good morning to people. And I'd say, yes, normally that is not my thing, but where I work, you know, we all really get along. The people are great. So we're just like, blah, 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 you know? Oh, really? Because <laughs> I had the same thing. I never want to say, you know, I'm not the social chit chat, you know, Fuck good you. morning. No. It depends on my mood. But some no. days, you know, if I'm a little elevated, I want to talk and joke around and it's not considered weird. So, I mean, I'm in a good place and I just love the kids I support and, and my fellow staff are awesome too. And I'm um, going back well on Tuesday, so... Oh, good. So yeah. what's the best part? What What's your favorite part of the job then? Uh, just um, being really open about uh, autism acceptance and letting the kids know that, you know, uh, if you ever want to talk or anything, you're, you're safe with me. Uh, recently, I made a list of kids um, who can, you know, talk to me if they run into an issue because our admins asked us, you know, if we wanted to uh you know, help certain kids. And I, I wrote this list and I'm thinking, holy fudge, like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got quite a few people here. Like th these are, these are my neuro kin. This is great. And then these are the guys that are you know, coming after us. And I'm just so proud of all of them They've because my school is, is so diverse, you know, for the most part, it is a pretty uh, safe place for these guys. And and it's just nice because when I was in school, I, I masked and I didn't. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, when I was being silly and goofy, um, actually a funny side, I was reading my initial assessment that I had before my diagnosis. And even though I had a really good psych, you know, he kind of missed the mark in some parts. And he was saying basically that I think I'm funny, but nobody else does. And I'm oh even to this day, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm fucking funny. I'm funny. I can't be funny. <laughs> you know? hey, You're funny out, to me. Shout out to my ex-mother-in-law and my wife when you said that. Yeah, fuck you. I'm funny. Ah, I'm <laughs> cute, man. See, I got a fucking podcast. I'm with you. Like, what? It's like when uh, guys, like, especially like, you know, old white men say women aren't funny. Well, yeah, we fucking are. Yeah, we are. 
<laughs> we are. And, and I just want to let you know, I do a show called WAP, and it stands yes. for Women Are Funny with a PH. I just want to let you know that. Please. <laughs> And we're taking it to Boise, Idaho, a black comedy show and an all woman lineup. That'll that'll fucking oh, that'll be great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let me ask like you. Like I said, I want to hear more from the BIPOC community. I feel like us whiteies have had uh, a lot of time to talk about our autism and our lives. And now I just want to hear other people's stories. Um, you know, I have a huge collection of books. I'm, you know, really into reading up on the latest literature and stuff. Because one thing I got to say about the kids I work with is this generation does not fuck around. They <laughs> this. And the last thing they want is some millennial with like a, a boomer attitude uh, when it comes to things like gender and, you know, neurodiversity. It, it was great. I was walking with a student um, and AFAB that prefers he, them pronouns. And he was telling me just about, um, you know, how his parents always suspected he was autistic. And by the end of our conversation, he's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dante, she I says AFAB. Or is it AFAB? I don't know. I just read stuff. I don't know. I, I I'm not around people that A-F-A-B. use these acronyms. Right. It's AFAB. Yeah. I was going to say A-F-A-B. A C A B. All cops are bastards. That's A cab, yeah. but this is yeah. A fab. A fab. You're close. It's assigned female, assigned at, female birth. at birth. Yeah. Because oh. <laughs> I don't want to say girl I, because I that person's not a girl. It's not know. a girl. Listen, yeah. they made a post in the comedy group about how they were tired of all the SJWs. And I was like, I like single Jewish women. What's wrong with single Jewish women? Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with single Jewish women. I love snip and then us. Oh, social justice word. Well, I'm not mad yeah. at them either. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, not mad at them. <laughs> Those are kind of the same thing. You. Sh- oh, sorry. I. I, <laughs> I digress. But no, that's- you know, caring about other people. Oh my God! You know, such a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the mis- so. Um, I'm glad you. We do comedy, and I say we. I say suit man, but Jane Jira suit man and damn it Audra we're gonna get her on stage one day but we do comedy and my focus is is doing non-white male comedy shows and it pisses people off as Jane as Audra Jane's in the comedy community she's seen people this is bullshit this is racist it's like no it's not go to laughs go to underground you'll see white people I'm doing Mm -hmm. an independent show with non-white people sorry my bad (laughs) like I don't just on this show alone, I'm sure Jen can, you know, attest to this too, but people, you know, ask, can, can we be on the show or can we do this? And they're not autistic or even neurodivergent. That was awesome. We got, Bruh. we read, no. we had out of 28 people email, I think I deleted like 10 of them, a third of them because they're <laughs> like, I mean, I might be, I mean, I know somebody. <laughs> I mean, I know somebody. Well, if you know somebody, let's get that person on the show. Again. <laughs> <laughs> How about that I, person? <laughs> the funny one is now people are wanting to be autistic so they can be on our shows. And I'm like, this isn't how that works. Like, no. you know, you don't want to be I, American so you can get a tribal casino share. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's not how <laughs> I, and I don't and I don't want to jinx it, but it's almost like I, I, I'm so glad that more people are aware of autistic people because we are here. Mm-hmm. But now my fear is that it's almost becoming a fad to be autistic. One of my friends was actually worried that that would happen with our show. And I was like, well, you see, that's why we have questions. That's why and we have if questions. You can't answer the question. It's going to be pretty hard to get you on here, bro. Well, and that's why we know people like Jen to make sure that. You know. <laughs> but just so we're clear, everybody who is listening, yeah, self diagnosis is valid. We do recognize that. That is because of all the barriers with healthcare. We do understand that. Um, mm-hmm. We just don't want somebody on here who says, hey, my brother's cousin's friend is autistic. Can I be on the show? <laughs> yeah. And then they start talking about all kinds of things that they shouldn't talk about because right. they don't know. And I mean, I've seen so many comments on Facebook by family members and it's just face palm after face palm. Like, no, this, this is for autistics by autistics. I think, what are we on day three now, Jen of April? Yeah. Has it been that bad yet? You know, um, I've made sure my Facebook wall, uh, very ND neurodiversity friendly and Me too. Honestly, it hasn't been all that bad. I've even had um, a parent 
uh, reach out to me, uh, who's also a racial minority and, um, you know, wants to do the right thing for her daughter. And Mm -hmm. she was just so happy. I was able to give her a bunch of resources, you know, just little things like that. You know, it felt felt really good, you know, and, um, and I'm thinking she can also, you know, educate other people on this because I gave her you know resources from many different people um you know who uh have phenomenal pages parents and advocates and you know it's awesome and it's really nice when a parent says to you know I don't want to make the wrong mistakes you know I don't want to harm my child and Mm -hmm. exactly and even if uh they have made mistakes you know hey we can all learn to do and be better and that's a good thing, you know, when people reach out and say, you know, I, I don't know, but you know, how can, uh, how can I learn to do better? I think that, I think we've lost that in society. I, we were just talking about this, like we've lost the ability to uh, learn how to make a mistake or, and then move on from it or have solutions. Mm-hmm. And so that's, yeah, that's an important point. I'm not, I'm One, not even know if it's the mistake part, I, I just think we don't know how to forgive anymore. Oh, that's true. You know what I mean? Like I, I talked to this about somebody about dating even. Oh, this will be great for tomorrow as well. But um, <laughs> once you hit about 39 or 40 or, you know what I mean, 45, you're like, yeah, one red fucking flag and I'm gone. And it's mm-hmm. like, you're not going to get a perfect relationship. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> he's got to have some sort of baggage. He's not 20. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. And vice versa, that I also had to have the realization that I can't deal with somebody who doesn't have some baggage. Like, I can't be your first fucking mistake. Like, fuck, shit happen. The power's off. Grab some candles. This can't be. <laughs> yep. <laughs> one last, one last question, uh, Jen, before we move into what I call my lightning round. Oh, um, I haven't done my questions yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just talking been taken to over. my She's- friend. That's <laughs> Why are you, Audra? We were just talking about more BIPOCs talking. Jane, did you have any questions? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> One last question, because I have to ask her, because I have to ask them, because I never get to see. Okay. Your snakes, I, do you have, like, pictures? Are they around, or do they stay in the in their terrarium? They're, um, they're upstairs in their terrariums right now, mm-hmm. but um, I can probably... Uh, go oh no, it's okay. Um, let's just talk about your snakes. So yeah, sure. Like, Ask me anything. What kind of yeah. snakes are they? Uh, they're ball pythons. Actually, mm-hmm. funny story. I was at a pet store uh, getting uh, cat food <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, for my old cat, and the guy at the store asked me, uh, you know, what what kind of snakes do you have? And I said, I have two balls. <laughs> <laughs> And my mom, like, she's trying not to laugh. And the guy's face is completely red. And I'm like, pythons. I mean, pythons, ball pythons. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And I, I, you know, I'm like, and Athena is such and such age. And and Lilith is such and such age. And yeah, I think I'm just going to go and buy my cat food now. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Oh, it was awkward. But, you know, it's pretty funny. (laughs) Yeah. And they're uh, they're unique patterns. Um is one thing I really like about ball pythons because with the breeding and genetics, you can get really cool patterns. Athena, my eldest, is a pastel jungle. She is ah, mostly okay. orangey yellow. Ooh. And she's got um, black and brown spots on her too. And Lily is a Mojave. So she's like a sandy desert brown with cool uh, uh, yellow shoe horse pattern along Ooh. like her sides. I always thought it was fascinating because I like I like all animals, but snakes are really cool. I used to work with them in the lab, you know, just taking care of them. And I I don't know, there's something about them. They actually do have personality, and I think they get kind of a bad rep. I don't know. <laughs> they really do, and I think because I'm an autistic person and I know how it feels to be misunderstood, it would make sense that I would have. Uh, pet animals that are also uh, a misunderstood species. And um, yeah, one thing I wanted to share was when I was new to my job, I worked at an elementary school and we had uh, a really awesome principal who wanted me to bring um, my snake, Athena. Lilith was just a baby at the time, but he wanted me to bring her to kind of show people that 
you know, some breeds are just totally harmless, nothing to be afraid of. And one thing I discovered when I brought her was that she was drawn to all the minority kids, all the foster kids, all the kids that had so-called behavioral problems. It's like she just knew. And it's a real shame that, you know, the only therapy animals we have here in town are dogs. Like, I don't even think they're graduating that. Dogs are awesome. I mean, I love dogs. I, I love all animals, but you know, uh, Athena would be an amazing therapy animal because they provide sensory stimulation. Like they give you squeezies, uh, yeah. they give you little nose boops and you can talk to them and they're not going to make any noise and stuff. So Dante, you, know. you want a nose boop from a snake? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even pet the deer that wanted to walk up on me at Ocean Shores. I'm not falling for that shit. And it's then do you know what the funny princess. thing was? Is the day after I got back, a deer jumped into a bus on ABC on oh, some crazy geez. fucking shit. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm the bad guy. But now if I would have been the one with my windows punched out, everybody would have had a fucking laugh at suit man. Time about that's your white part getting you in trouble. Yeah, fuck you guys. No, I don't know. Nah. But I, I can't lie. So I've had two tarantulas and two turtles. I love I, I love tarant. I like to watch things that kill. Because the snake can do that. Oh yeah, they yeah. Can. But a snake's waiting to get big enough to eat you. Like that's <laughs> that's. Well, these guys aren't very big. Um, honestly, when I was uh, researching snakes, I wanted to get a boa constrictor, but then I realized, um, you know, as a single person at the time, that's too much snake. And they oh, also yeah. have teeth, yeah. and when they bite, it hurts. Like ball pythons have more uh, like gums. They do have teeth. It does hurt when they bite, but my snakes aren't really biters. I only got bit by uh, Lily once, and that's because she mistook me for food. That's the only time they'll ever bite a person if you, you know, care for them and raise them properly. And if they're not dicks, because you know animals are like people. I've heard of ball pythons that are complete dicks. Like Lily's mom, her name was Bitch, I think. So she was not a nice snake, but she bred, you know, she had beautiful babies. So yeah, I was named Stupid Fucker till I had a little brother and found out he was Stupid Fucker too. So I didn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just depends on who you're, who you at, which parents you ask. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll let you guys go. So Dante, James here. I'm sorry. I took a Took, took up a lot of time. I, I was Very just giving you shit. If I really had something to say, I'd have said it. Don't worry. I just wanted to hear about the snakes. <laughs> no, no snake stories. Now I'm fucking with you. <laughs> well, let me ask you this because um, I always try to follow up on what you gave us, but it says that you were a disgruntled teen, right? And mm -hmm. you thought autism was basically a load of shit. What, what changed that for you? Uh, like I said, when I started uh, doing a practicum at college working with... Uh, autistic kids because when I first met these kids they acted the same way I acted as a kid things that I didn't even want to admit to you know have been doing because I got bullied for them like all my stimming all you know just my ways of moving and being in the world you know I was picked on for all those things so I got it in my head that I had to stop doing those things I basically ABA'd myself like it's terrible that's what a lot of us did back in the 80s when you had neighborhood kids saying you were weird. And um, yeah, it, you know, it, it was really hard getting a diagnosis back in the 90s when there was basically no information on this. Um, the only kids that I had heard of that were autistic had other disabilities that made them more visible. And that wasn't me, you know, I was working on trying to hide it. I thought I succeeded at hiding it. So when they found out I was legit weird, I was mad. I was like, how did they know? And, and I was mad at my mom. I'm like, why did you tell them about the time I, you know, thought I was an airplane and, you know, my obsession with parts of vacuum cleaners. But then in a way, I'm kind of glad because those are stereotypes and those stereotypes ensure that I got diagnosed because I was seeking out an ADHD diagnosis because mm. uh, my brother's also ADHD and yeah. so, so is my nephew like so that's a big one in my family too but then it turned out I guess I knew in the back of my head that there was more to it but I wasn't quite ready for it until I you know met kids like me and I was a little bit more older mature getting an education so but it was tough because uh following that my relationship broke up um I was actually going to move to the east coast of the United States and those plans went kaput so um yeah, a lot of things changed for me and I had to really uh, 
take an inventory of my life. And that's when um, I discovered the online community. I had encountered some ableism uh, one day. Someone told me I couldn't possibly be autistic because I was nothing like this uh, mostly non-speaking person they knew up at the <laughs> university. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, and I mean, you can't compare to autistics. You, you can't compare any autistics. We're, we're all unique. And exactly. um, that upset me. So I went on Facebook and I found a support group and it was mostly based down in Australia. This was, a, you know, quite a long time ago, 2011, I think. And mm -hmm. it was through that group that I eventually did meet Barb and, you know, get into writing. So it was just, I'm grateful for it. I met so many people. I'm still in contact with them. And I was finally able to see that it, it was true and that what people said, you know, I shouldn't listen to them. And honestly, it's been the same. I mean, I, I, was I was diagnosed later in life, you know, but I always knew that something was different about me. Yeah. And yeah. And so I eventually came, you know, to my own understanding and realization of my own self and my own authentic self. And, you know, thankfully, you know, here we are you know, you're on the show and it's, you know, it's great. It's, yeah. I was going to say it's been great. Well, that's where the growth has been for me. Cause I find my nonverbal communication with other NDs is awesome. <laughs> my nonverbal communication with normies horrible. Oof. Right. Yeah. And like I, when we all talked about doing the show, I was like, oh, so that's why me and you get along, Jane. And Jane was like, well, yeah, I thought you were autistic, too. And it's, oh, so you thought so, too, huh? I was kind of mad. But it was, it was it was understanding. Like, you know, I come from a, 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 a mixed black, white, I'm partial deaf. I'm, I, I've got a mental disability. I'm high anxiety. I've got all this shit that's going on with me. And so it's hard to identify what's what sometimes. And so when you start meeting more people, like uh, who is it emma talked to us about like you have a higher chance for her eye disease if you're autistic and you have oh yeah erling's yeah, yeah erling's Erling. disease right mm -hmm. and then usually if you have autism you usually have something else too and if you're high anxiety those kind of go hand in hand and some of the things that i've been reading it was like oh that that explain you know what i mean like that that feeling of relief that i've i've i'm not the bad guy here right like we don't all have the same experiences but we all have the same insecurity i guess is the thing right yeah yeah exactly so we go don't know what it's like speed round audra go ahead we know you're waiting i see you over chomping at your damn bit i want to ask my questions go i like ahead. my questions that's her autism i did my homework see i did my homework i raised my hand. I did my homework i raised my hand i did my homework i raised my hand it's here <laughs> I do my work. Um, so if you are new to the show and have not listened, I like to do something on the show called a lightning round where I ask about three questions that are what we call societal norms or normie questions, neurotypical questions. <laughs> and then about three questions that are what I like to call autistic questions, neurodiverse questions, or something that I would like to be asked as an autistic person. <laughs> So are, you, <laughs> so are you ready, Jen? Yep. All right. What was your favorite subject in school? Drama. Oh, yeah. see. All right. So that makes sense now with the public speaking and the comedian side to you. Okay, yeah. great. You're a girl. Of course it's drama. No. Oh, shit. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait, now we have to go back because I got to ask. So what if you're okay do you mind if I ask what pronouns you use? She, they. I mean, I look like a she, but inside I'm a they through and through. Okay. So I've always used they with Jen, but I was never, ever 100% sure until I asked. So that's why. I appreciate it. You know, yeah. a lot of people uh, are welcome to use they if they want. I mean, that would be awesome because I'm used to she. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was just going by the, the, I asked pronouns and it said I could say she, her, or they, or them. Yeah. So yeah. I, I know that's why the I, question. I did. No, it's actually one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're still in my question. See, she didn't do her fucking homework. You, you're it's culturally you. appropriating a question. You're question appropriating. All right, go ahead. <laughs> because it's also something that Jen has also talked about as well. So anyways, 
Next question. <laughs> Beach or forest? Forest. Oh, see, I wasn't actually sure on that one. You would love the state in which I live. We have nothing but forest. <laughs> Yeah, and we have nothing but forest up here too because I'm up the road. It's oh. funny. Um, yeah, I'm in uh, northern British Columbia, so mm -hmm. it's all forest. Yeah, this is why I plan on visiting Jen uh, real soon. So at some point. Yeah. Uh, Becca's on my next list to visit as well, only because I want to go see so many people in Colorado because apparently it's me and Jen over here. Sorry, guys. I, it's not that I exclude you. It's but I kind of do because we all met at the same <laughs> But Jen, Jen and I live over here, right? And then all these other advocates that we all knew and kind of professionally grew up together all now live in Colorado, it seems like. Because hmm. um, like Becca's there, Dennis is there. Um, there's Max like a whole Sparrow's bunch of- Max there. Um, yeah, Max is Jenny's there now. there. A lot yeah. of people. Yeah, yeah. so everyone just kind of up and, and went, so- um, what is your favorite stimming activity? Um, listening to music and just kind of stim dancing. Ooh, oh, I love stim dancing. Me too. What's your favorite music though? Um, I like all kinds of music. I'm through and through a metal head. So that joke about heavy metal on Michael McCleary's page is seating. <laughs> I saw um, that. He's a, for people who don't know, he's a autistic comedian from the greater Toronto area. So he's like way east of me. So yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. not close in the same country, but not even close. Cause when a lot of people think of Canada, you know, they think of Toronto and Montreal and maybe Vancouver, but um, what they don't realize is that. that? <laughs> I've been to Vancouver, a, Canada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a big so country and uh, Vancouver is uh South of me. So yeah. Exactly. Um, what is your favorite dinosaur? Uh, T-Rex. Oh, wait, which one did you bring today, Jane Jira? Yeah, well, oh, I have all of them. I've got oh, yeah. the T-Rex skeleton. I've got broccoli. And then I've got my triceratops thing. Yeah. Nice. It's a party. <laughs> what is your actually, favorite? I'm actually What's skimming right now. I do this a lot with my fingers. Hey, that's mm -hmm. what I do. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, as, as a kid, I, I wasn't allowed to do like big stims. So I do a lot of little stims. But when I'm by myself, I like to sing and dance around and, you know, just let loose. I that's know. I'm still not used to doing that in front of other people. So I still ha I still do that in my own office, like privately. So I'll do it at work sometimes if the song of the morning's good. Because chances are there will be other autistic students stim dancing in the hallway. So I'll just join in. Synchronized stimming. It's a oh, thing. See, that would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> a stimmed flash mob. Totally. Um, all right. Last question. Would you rather swim in a pool filled with, filled with jello or spaghetti, cooked spaghetti noodles? Jello. Oh, oh, we got the jello. Jane Jira, what's your answer to that one? Definitely jello because I already eat spaghetti all the time, but I never get to be around jello. I didn't say you had to eat the spaghetti. I well, I mean, if I'm in it, then I'm going to end up eating it. So, <laughs> oh, that's true. I might as well. I like spaghetti too and potato chips. Oh. <gasps> yes. Potato chips. What's your favorite kind of potato chip? Uh, as a Canadian, I would have to say all dressed. Oh, it sounds fancy. What it's uh, kind of like, it's hard to explain, but I guess it's supposed to be ketchup, vinegar, and barbecue, I guess. It's, uh -oh. I don't I'm know. I'm open to trying it. That sounds it, horrible. Like it, <laughs> I need to try these. Either like it or you don't. Like, it's one of those things. And I really like them, especially since um, I can't stomach a lot of the flavors I used to enjoy. Like, I literally can't, so... I do enjoy a bag of all dressed every once in a while, but for the most part, my snack is popcorn. What's that Ooh, about? Sorry. What's that about, huh? No. <laughs> I had to get one Wait, in. I had to get one in. I didn't get an answer to Don Dante. What's would what, the would you rather? Jello or spaghetti noodles? Fucking neither. Uh, 
That just sounds horrible. Like you got your balls in jello and <laughs> I don't want to be picking spaghetti out of my ass crack and that's Okay, spaghetti. I didn't think about that. Like, uh, it's no. bad enough doing that with long hair, so yeah, I, 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 I totally hear you now. Person, right? Like I'm not yeah. I don't wanna get jello in this. No. There's I'm only half white, Audra. I'm sorry. I'm only like <laughs> Well, well, I guess go I'm gonna be a different man. one. You don't, you don't waste food. You're gonna eat <laughs> it. All. You swim in it, you know. But my no. dad's been in it. I don't want to eat it. Like, no, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm going with spaghetti noodles just because there's something about to feel those noodles, man. You gotta put your hands. Oh, you're a fucking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> nope. That's a little too slimy for me. Yeah, that was my line. Uh, you're now you're out, you're off my group. Yeah, we gotta we gotta find new co-host. <laughs> Say yes to Dan. Do you want to be my new co-host? Jello only, no noodles. Jello only, no noodles. <laughs> oh, I'd love to be on a future show. That would be fun. Oh, this is great. It's, it's, it's just podcast. like hanging out. It's, it's like it's hanging out in the living room with your buddies. You know, it, it's great. Like one thing I've really missed with uh, COVID is seeing my friends. Like the only friend I get to see mm-hmm. is someone you know from work like my work bestie, but I don't get to see any of my other friends because they're all immunocompromised. They're, they're all like neurodivergent. You know how it goes. Yep. I don't think Jen, did you see on my, on my Facebook where I actually got my second COVID shot and I had a a reaction to it. Yeah. had a seizure and woke up on the floor with the paramedics surrounded. (laughs) Oh shit. I saw that. It sounds like we've both had like a really bad time like medically that was a great things. time she's lying she was turning <laughs> she was they, like, they, they, they were touch. she was like Ooh, let me, let me, let me, they ooh. were attractive well that's they good were. uh they were all male and i didn't get a female paramedic that day that's okay though Sad. maybe next maybe next time, time. um i falling and i can't get up <laughs> yeah i'm falling i can't I am I am 40. <laughs> I'm turning 40 this year. I've done that. I've been told I need a life alert because I fell in the shower. That was my <laughs> ex wife's funny. You need a life alert. You got unbalanced because of your ear. And if you fall again, I'm not going to be. Shut up. If I die. I die. Fuck it. <laughs> I was actually joking to Rob about that. That That's my fiance. Um, I think I was at my parents' house and I saw the life alert commercial and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause like with my diabetes, sometimes I get complications and yeah, I might need one of those things, especially the older I get. I mean, we're not kids anymore, folks. I know. Well, I, I need still them. am. <laughs> I was going to say, James, you're Fuck the you, only Jane. one. I was waiting for it. I'm only 25. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm not even 25 yet. Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> shut up. Just stop stop a lot of us are just like you know we're just naturally kids and old farts simultaneously so Mm -hmm. autism doesn't have an age like that's right i still sleep with my blankie and i am proud of it (laughs) sometimes my knee hurt and i'm like ah am i getting old already oh my god cribbage and pinochle and the only people who play with me are old women at the senior home so hey it is what it is right that's right (laughs) you know it's really funny uh i posted a status not too long ago. And I was, um, you know, all the kids I work with are neurodivergent. I mean, that's the, that's part of my job. And um, a couple of them were just talking to each other. And one of them said, dude, do you remember when like fidget spinners were like a thing? Kid was like, yeah, man, we're getting old. (laughs) And they're like 14. No. There is a lot of truth to that because I did say that the other day. I was like, "Whatever happened to fidget spinners? Remember that? Like everybody was a fidget spinner for three fucking weeks. What happened? Have you guys tried the fidget cubes? Mm-hmm. I have. I love them. They're so much fun. Yeah, they're way better. I don't yes. know where mine is, but um, yeah, that thing is great. It really they got have- me through tough times when I was new to my job. Yeah, did they have? rings too that you could flip the rings that flip and like the switchy thing i I like the like you know that you see on power bars yeah that thing's cool there's so many things what do you have anything special for us anything crazy going on any new books any new publishings anybody you want to talk about or tell us about before we go or how can they find you i know you talked about being an advocate and helping coach so how would they be able to find you if they wanted your help um well they can uh follow me on Facebook. I'm pretty uh, 
open on there to friend requests. Um, they can also follow the Spectrum Women page. I, um, I'm the one that does most of the social media and, uh, you know, articles and things like that. Not all the time. And um, I think I'm going to be in a new book. I haven't heard back from uh, the person that's putting it out yet, but um, everyone's been busy and it's going to be on identity first language and oh, um, oh geez, what else? That um, is going to be I, an awesome project. <laughs> yeah. Which is really cool because um, a lot of people know this, but I'm, I'm friends with the person that started the identity first uh page back in 2015 and there was a lot of brainstorming that went into that so it's something that I've been passionate about and you know a lot of people still don't know um, the importance of you know saying you're autistic versus with autism because I can't screw my brain out of my head and stick it in my purse and just like <laughs> put it down and not be autistic it informs who I am everything I do and I'm sure uh, it's the same for you guys. Uh, yeah, definitely autistic all the way. And I always tell people mm -hmm. when I work, I use that term and I don't care because I'm thankfully I'm private practice, so I don't have to worry about anything, but whatever building I step in, I don't care. I use the terms autistic. And if you don't like it, that's you're either correct me because I know some people do like to use the term person with autism who identify that way. And I'm okay with doing that for that person who's that's autistic. Up to them. That's up yeah. to them, but I will not correct myself for another medical professional. No way. No, me neither. Fuck. No, you nope. know, we we've had to mask and compromise our self-worth for way too long. And now it's time that people sit down and listen to us, especially mm -hmm. our, um, you know, our minority siblings on the spectrum for sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's a great spot to end on. Yeah. Let's go. Yes. Let's but hey, black autistic <laughs> matter too. Balm. We'll call it the balm movement, right? Um, I, it's been a pleasure having you on, Jen. Did you guys have any pertinent questions? I mean, I know you guys are going to chit chat forever, but I mean, do we? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, Jen. Thank you, everybody, for tuning It was a pleasure. If this you guys don't fun. know, real quick, we'll let you know tomorrow at noon. We'll be on here again. We'll be doing our Dating with Disabilities show. Um, it's at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 8 p.m. London Time. That's even 12 p.m. for uh, Jen. She, we'll get her on here one of these days, too. Oh, shit. That's going to be crazy. Um, she can talk about marriage. Yeah. Woohoo. Woo She's getting married. Yeah. But again, I'm your host, Dante <laughs> the Soup Man Barnett. Give it up for our guest today, Jen Etchelson. Give it up for sunshine on a cloudy day, Audra Seasick. Yeah. And last but not least, don't leave potato chips in my bed or I'll be yeah. you a camera. Yeah. Fantastic artist for thank you for coming in. We'll be doing dating with disabilities tomorrow, and we'll be back with four and a half with comedian Kayla Marie on uh, April 18th at our usual time of 8 a.m. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Have a great night. <laughs>